As someone who used to play drums in high school and college, I really appreciate the amount of drumming themed rhythm games that are coming out in the gaming world. We have Taiko Drum Master that's had a fair bit of buzz, but we also have another one that's more comic or anime like, featuring a genre that's not often in handheld music games, metal. Promising to be a very unique and very different type of music game, here is my review of Gal Metal for the Nintendo Switch. There aren't many rhythm games out there with a story, but this one does. Gal Metal is about a guy and a girl that live in Japan who are abducted by aliens and both placed inside the girl's body. The aliens are aiming to destroy planet Earth because one of the Voyager satellites accidentally destroyed their home planet. With mere days before the invasion arrives, they have to go to the girls' school and assemble the Metal Club, because the only power known to man that can harm aliens is the power of metal. Overall, I like story mode. There was a lot of comedy, a lot of sci-fi references, and just enough little friendship events to make this feel like a little bit of a social game and not just a rhythm game. The only thing I didn't like is how the story tends to kind of drag and drone on in some of the chat room events where you and the other members of the band are discussing various issues. When it comes to gameplay, this is a music game or a rhythm game, although it does have a few minor RPG and social elements thrown into the mix when you're not playing songs. When you first dive in, you got a bunch of different game modes to choose from. You got story mode, where you can go through the story campaign. You've got free play and practice, where you can replay all of the songs unlocked in story mode. And then you got mode change for different control styles. Though, as I just said, practice and free play are for songs that are unlocked in story mode. So really, you gotta go through story mode first to unlock the songs to go back and use in those other modes. When you're trekking through story mode, it feels pretty different from other music games. Every chapter gives you a certain amount of time to go around town and partake in various events, like doing part-time jobs, hanging out with your friends, or practicing, which all increase your stats. And that's where RPG elements come into play because you got a bunch of different stats that you need to increase to give you various effects, like giving you extra points when you do certain combos during concerts, or helping you recover when you mess up. This is also where all of those friendship events happen. You can go and do whatever you want, but if you spend more time with certain friends or make certain dialogue choices in the chat room sequences, you can unlock special friend events, where you can unlock in-game trophies, as well as learn a lot more about the different characters of the game. After all, who goes through a game like this and doesn't pick a favorite character and spend enough time with them to get that special BFF medal? You continue doing these events until you either run out of stamina or choose to go to a concert. And doing a concert is where the game starts to feel like a rhythm game. Each of these is considered a boss battle against invading aliens, where you play out a song, and the better you do in the song, the more points you get, and as long as you reach a certain point threshold, you win and move on to the next chapter. But it's not as simple as any other rhythm game. Notes don't fly at you for inputs, and there is no real right way to do it. During the chapter, if you choose to practice, you can learn various beats and rhythms that are geared towards that chapter song. And when you play that chapter song, you just perform various beats and rhythms any way you see fit. Certain rhythms and combos will net you more points, but as long as you reach the point threshold, you can pretty much freestyle every song in the game. And that's what makes this game feel really unique. Because there's no set rule of how you have to do it. You're allowed to do it however you want, and it's not really that hard to reach those point thresholds, even if you have a lot of trouble. As much fun as this is, there is one downside to the game. The amount of content. As far as I know, all of the songs in this game were created for this game, but the game only has 13 different songs for you to play through. Now, if you throw these 13 songs along with replays and story content, the entire game will probably only take you about 5 hours to complete. And that's not much time for a $30 game. Well, it's true, if you pay an extra $10 for the retail version, you get DLC characters and DLC songs, but it's still not that much bang for your buck. Now let's talk controls, which is what makes this game unique, but also what makes this game very flawed. There are three different ways you can play this game. You can use motion controls by holding the Joy-Cons and use them as drumsticks, which as a drummer I really enjoyed. You can use touch controls to tap on various instruments on screen, 
and you can use button controls and have each instrument be a button that you can press. The problem is that none of these control schemes get it quite right. When you're using motion controls, the right Joy-Con was very inconsistent in its inputs, working some of the time but not all of the time, even after several recalibrations. And then when you go into touch controls or button controls, there's a bit of input lag between tapping the screen or a button and the input actually being put in. Now you could adjust to this lag, but it's still lag. Now let's talk presentation. When you're on the world map, everything is 2D, but when you're in the middle of a concert, everything is cell shaded 3D and very colorful and very smooth. I never saw any jagged edges around the models, and all of the cinematic shots looked really nice when I w went back and watched replays, and performance is pretty much the same. The frame rate is nice and smooth, the game never froze or crashed on me, and the load times are nice and short. Now let's talk battery life, which is something that was pretty surprising. Gal Metal has a battery range of 2 hours and 58 minutes on high settings, up to 4 hours and 23 minutes on low settings. And do note, those battery ranges were only from the 3D gameplay, not from the 2D gameplay. Now in conclusion, Gal Metal is a very unique music game. The freestyle drumming and the funny sci-fi story is definitely something you're not going to get anywhere else. However, the game is brought down by the fact that all three control schemes don't get it quite right, and there's not really a lot of content here. It's definitely a cute music game to trek through, just don't expect it to last dozens of hours. Reviews to Go rates Gal Metal for the Nintendo Switch a 7 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below, or head to the website at reviewstogo.com. Hey there guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Just want to remind everyone that if my Patreon campaign reaches at least $100 per month, I will remove any and all advertisements and monetization from this channel. That's at patreon.com slash reviews to go. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.